There we go. Wow, it's all good. Um, can you tell oh, hi, you guys. Okay, so I got two people in. We're gonna, um, hi everyone, we're gonna start the restorative in a, in a couple of minutes. And uh, it's kind of funny because Celeste and Shirley are here, Celeste Shirley. Um, and- uh, Julian's here. Hey, hi, Julian. <laughs> and uh, so- Hey, everyone. <laughs> So uh, yeah, now that I know I can hear you, uh, do feel free because it will be nice and quiet and peaceful. Do feel free to, uh, you know, blurt out any questions, you know, like, are, do we keep our legs straight, Celeste? You know, any questions that you get happening in your mind as we're doing it. And I'll, I'll do it music free. The Cardinals have been going crazy up front. Did you hear that, Shirley, on the way in? Yes. Oh. They're just salmon stopped. Um, so maybe we'll get some bird action. And uh, Sarah, um, uh, Willow is not out back right now. Oh, I know. So she was there as well as you know, she was there yesterday, but uh, she's currently not out back. Uh, and um, yeah, that's the nature report. <laughs> so <clears throat> for those that don't have a bolster, hi Julian. For those that don't have a, a bolster, because um, you know, not everybody has a bolster, right? Uh, I, I got a couple of pillows that most people would have, you know, they're like sofa pillows. And you could also use, if you have like your typical head bed pillow, you could use three of those. And um, if you have three or two, and then you could put that under your knees or under your bum, it's gonna be super soft. And that will give you some, some tip up of your bum bone. And I'll give, uh, I'm going to give lots of instruction today to uh, help you get into the, you know, the feel of doing your practice at home. Um, <clears throat> and then let me just say a little bit about, uh, about the class. Um, so restorative is, is uh, basically the ability to let go into the pose. There's not an ambition that you're using. It's really more... Um, uh, that you are, um, sorry, I'm just trying to see if I can do something. Um, it's more that you're, uh, you're letting go into the posture and letting your breathing deepen the, pro the posture. So you can let go of ambition and we are going to do some strong poses to warm us up, but, um, really let yourself have the breathing move you. I, I like to think of it as the breath is first and then it moves you into the posture, just as if the breath is the wind in your sails and everything extends out from your expression of the breath. And that is just a, a, a wonderful, deep inner prompt that allows you to come deeper into your practice. Um, Julian, are you still there with voice? Because I'm just wondering how yep. to get my screen. I have no screen and I'm trying to see how I can see where I am on the screen. Must be a way to do you this. have no screen? Like you can't see the Zoom thing? Video, play video, now I've lost you. I can just see you in the little window. Oh. Now you're back. Now there you're back. You so I'll, uh, I'll begin. There, now I can see where you guys are. Awesome. And we're going to start. Um, and sure, we do feel free to be forward a bit because there's still, you could even be in the whole type of nature here if you'd like that. No, I'm actually right here. Okay. Okay, lovely. So we're going to start today uh, sitting on the floor and you can come into a cross-legged position and feel free to um, have a pillow underneath your bum and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to use the bolster and again for those that don't have a bolster just use, uh, use some pillows. I'll show you what I mean. So we'll start in a cross-legged seated position. And um, so here's my handy bolster. And then there's also, you can use any kind of a, a, a thick pillow, or if you have a meditation pillow, you could be sitting on that, or you can take a couple of pillows and stack them. And that way you'll just have the tip of the tailbone, which is usually nice to take right on the, right on the uh, pillow. And then you get that tip forward with the tailbone. And in all of this posture, 
just notice that the, the chest is back. Because sometimes when you come tall, you might have a tendency to get high and exaggerate it. So just notice that you're sitting evenly on both bum bones. The chin is back slightly. And you feel like you have a plumb line rising right from the top of the head. So you feel that area uh, rising and you're dropping right into your sit bones evenly. Great, so we will start off with breath practice. So in your best position, if you need to have a lazy front or however you're comfortable, come right into a nice tall spine. Lovely. And if you turn the palms up, take the first finger and the thumb together. And begin by going inside. Just be aware of your breathing. Doesn't need to be any duration. Just noticing the breath. Notice the soft quality of the breath coming in through the nostrils and out through the nostrils. Feel the quieting occur inside of the mind. And then feel the sweetness of coming into your practice, the quieting, the stilling. You'll hear the train, of course, once in a while. And as always, practice feeling and hearing all sounds. So, you know, if your cat Stellar comes up or if something happens in your practice, there's noise, just instead of trying to block anything out, just simply notice sounds around you. It's so brilliant to practice everywhere so that you can feel how to be inside everywhere. Your back is tall, so you feel space in between the ribs and the hips. And you feel that wonderful plumb line, so you're really pulling up right from the top of the head. And just notice again that you're dropping down through the sitting bones, however your legs are. And as you come into awareness of your breath, we're going to come right into alternate nostril breathing. And for the alternate nostril breathing, you're going to take your uh, right hand, and this is the only time I'll be doing the same as you. Normally, I would mirror you. So you're going to take your right hand, take your ring finger, and then just place the ring finger on the outside of the left nostril. And breathe in, and you're closing that left nostril, and then you breathe in through the right. Close the right nostril with the thumb. Let the breath stay inside, retaining the breath. And then exhale through the left, lifting the finger. Breathe in through the left. Keep the spine tall. Close the left nostril. The breath stays inside and swirls, no tension, just a sense of fullness. And then exhale through the right. Doing the four count of the breath inside. Breathe in through the right. Now I'm going to give you counts. Breathing in, on the next one, I'll give you counts. And now close the right nostril. Retain the breath for four, three, two, one. And then exhale through the left. Let the air out slowly, slowly. And then inhale. Inhale, let's go for three, two, one. Close the left nostril. Retain the breath for four, three, two, one. One, exhale through the right for four, three, two, one. So I'll cure that out. Take air, breathe in through the right for four, three, two, one. Retain the breath, let it swirl around inside. Keep the spine tall if you can. And exhale and now through the left for four, three, two, one. Breathe in for four, three, two, one. Retain the breath, closing the nostrils. Stay tall. Rising right from the top of the head. 
And then here we go, exhale and through the right for four, three, two, one. Breathing in through the right for four, three, two, one. Closing the right, keeping the spine tall. Still, the rise through the spine. Exhale through the left for four, three, two, one. Breathing in for four, three, two, one. We're gonna retain the breath a little longer. Keep rising through the spine. That's three count, four, five, six. And then exhale for four, three, two, one. Breathing in for four, three, two, one. Retain the breath for about a six count. Keep your spine long. We're gonna exhale now a little longer when we get there. So keeping lifted through the spine. And now exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Breathe in for four, three, two, one. Retain the breath. Again, stay tall. Make sure you're relaxed though. Be in a comfortable position. And three, two, one. Exhale through the right. Five, four, three, two, one. And breathing in for four, three, two, one. Once again, retain the breath. This is our last cycle. Keep your spine tall. Be happy. Notice you're not trying to hold up, but drop through your bum bones and be even. Each side dropped. And then exhale slowly for five, four, three, two, one. And then just releasing the hand. You can keep your eyes closed or open if you want to see the pretty view. Just feel the effects of the breathing as you take that moment to clear and feel alive. And feel all the effects of the little nudging inside as the breathing stills the mind and helps to clear the etch-a-sketch of your mind and take it into your energy, into your body. Now, just sitting for a moment, you can, again, take a moment to just be here. And the longer exhale is that scientific relaxation of the nervous system. So we work towards the longer exhale to actually get the relaxation response. And that's, that is the uh, mechanics of the nervous system. When the exhale is longer, then you create a relaxation response right in the central nervous system. So uh, imagine yogis knew that over 5,000 years ago. They had this sense where a long exhale would, would still the nervous system. And the only other way that you can do that as effectively is to laugh. <laughs> You know, laughing is, causes a longer exhale. So the, the uh, ability to have a longer exhale at any moment. So let's say you're in line at Shopper's Drug Mart and you just need to calm your mind and you can do a, a longer exhale. Just notice. And the ability is, it feels so much like your nostrils are the tip of a balloon and you're just letting a little bit of air out at a time. And I feel like it's our most important practice of all of them is to practice a long exhale because we will find our most tension there, our most apprehension, our most anxiety. Uh, if we take in a breath, and let's do this together right now just to show you what I'm getting at. The, take in a nice deep breath, so we'll do a Now retain the breath. So again, you're not holding, but just let the breath swirl around inside. Now, just let a little bit of air out at a time. Go slowly, 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 slowly as you can. And notice if the breath catches. And that is your most valuable practice for calming the mind. If you can, if you can practice simply a slow exhale, that will be your most valuable tool 
for when you spike into any stress effect, anything, anxiety, concern, worry, all that's around us right now in the pandemic. So just notice if you start to go into that, that uh, we were just talking before class about how we're surrounded today by all the pandemic message. And how do we feel safe at this time inside? So that can steer our thoughts instead of the other channel. Okay, lovely. Yeah, so let's take, um, let's take the legs out in front and you can reach out through the heels and just pull back from the toes. Now, ideally, if you can have the balls of the feet together and the baby toe side pulling back, that's brilliant. And you might still be on your pillow. You're bringing the legs out and you really are attempting to be right at the front of the bum bones. Great, and as you pull the baby toe side back, just check that your toe base is straight. Great, and then that way you're getting the, the length in through the backs of the hamstrings. So I'm doing from the side, I'm doing this, um, as opposed to letting the feet rotate out, which they tend to. So the balls of the feet together. Now take an um, inhale, rise up from the ribs, lift and gaze up as the shoulders slide down. And now you can exhale and fold forward and come right out over the legs. You're drawing the toes back. You reach out through the heels and then you drop the chin. So you're lengthening from the low back. And if you're here, that's great. However, the position is, if you can keep the lift from the back. Yeah, that's good, Shirley. You can just let the shoulders drop a little bit. That's good. And you keep that lift from the spine. And uh, the position of the head is always straight. So the chin, you're looking straight past the tip of the nose. Then you know your <coughs> cervical spine, your spine is great. Now from there, you're reaching forward from the chest, keep the shoulders free, and then do just a little giggle, do a little <laughs> 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 So you can get the core engaged. Notice if you can reach a little further, it's a strong, strong warm up. And then one more giggle, just do a little <laughs> <laughs> Good, giggling on demand. And then gently just scaffold, walk the hands back up. Now, um, if you're on the floor, either one, take the hands just behind, use the heel of the hands, just like shoehorns, to press up and press and press the elbows back. Now we're gonna do a big inhale and gaze up and then tuck the chin and keep your chin tucked in, looking down, just past the tip of the nose. And it's like you're going for your cleavage with the eyes. Really look down so that you can get a nice long spine. And again, this is like imitating the Pez candy dispenser, the candy coming out the back of your neck. So you've got a super long neck. As you breathe in and out and stay actively lifting from the back and, and feel the heat and keep that breath going. If you need to look up, great. The activation is to pull up from the ribs, space in between the ribs and the hips. That's the bunda, the lock, that you're pulling up and in. That's good, Shirley. Could you take the elbows back a tiny bit? Yep. As you keep the lift. And now relax and lift. Just come back into neutral. Extend the arms out. And now gaze up and slide the shoulder blades down. And then one more time, you're going to tuck the chin on the exhale and look down and keep the wrists reaching out as you tuck the chin in. You're really tucking your musher chin, like a triple chin. So your shoulder blades keep sliding back as you tuck the chin and reach the wrists out. And breath. Okay, that's really good. Really good. I mean, I don't know if it's really good, I can't see you very well, but um, mm -hmm. just that, that pull back. Now, then we release the arms, and um, if you are using a pillow, you can come right down, and bravely come right down to the bum bones, and then just pull your bum bones back as your bum, <laughs> and come right to the front of the bum bones, and just do a little ducktail side to side, just do a little jiggle so you, yeah, that's really good. So you're nice and tall, that's really good. And you pull back from the toes. Now, once again, um, take the hands behind and you can take the hands to the elbows. And you can also 
potentially take the hands. So if you can get, not just here, but if you could get to the outside and then slide the shoulders down, lift. And if you're a reverse prayer, you can work on reverse prayer. And your hands are pressing, the elbows are pressing back. And if you're not reverse prayer so much, you're like this, that's beautiful. Just press the thumbs together and that will get the same effect. So we're working on shoulders back. And then from there, you take an inhale, gaze up. And then exhale and extend right out over the legs. Drop the chin so you're looking past the tip of the nose. Pull back from the toes. That's it. Surely more if you can. Pull the toes back here. Yeah. And you get that reach forward. See if you can yeah, reach out with the top of the head reaches out and the chin is down to lengthen your neck. And then you can breathe in, come all the way back up. This time, you take an in-breath gaze up, lift the eyes, and then you can exhale and once again, reach out and then drop the chin long through the spine. Keep your toes drawing back, legs are active. Baby toe side especially coming back. Really good. And then you can breathe in, lift. And now we're gonna take this exactly onto your back, so I'll demonstrate. You're gonna come down, Bring your legs up, and then you're gonna hold on right about at the shins and draw the legs in towards you. So coming over. So we'll come onto the back and you can pull the legs in. And just keep reaching out through the heels as you pull the toes back. See if you can really activate through the inner thighs. So you have that, uh, that reach out. That's good. Yeah, that's it, sure. You just keep the shoulders back so that, yeah, the chest is open. And if you tuck your chin slightly. Yeah, that's good. Good. Just try some of the lights here. Oops. Breath. Good. Now, so in your kind of bum down plow, just notice if you could then, and you could bend your knees, it's perfectly great too. And hold on behind the calves. And if you have short legs like me, you might be able to hold on to the feet and bring the feet over towards the head side. So you're going, you're going into a bum down plow action and your toes pull back. Just make sure your neck is happy. So you're really releasing through the neck and throat. And keep the heels reaching. Good. A little more out if you can with the heels. So you're gonna lengthen and reach. That's it. That's it. Now just release the hands and then bend the knees and lengthen the left leg down to the floor. Draw your right knee up and in. Take an in breath and then exhale and round the spine and tuck the chin in. And then you can hold on to that right leg with the opposite left hand. Lift that heel up, lengthen through the leg. Of course, you might have a knee way bent. And then slowly lower down and pull the toes back as you reach the left heel on the floor so you keep that left leg active. And keep on pulling the leg in. The shoulder is down and back. Fantastic, get a really good reach through that heel. That's it. Pull the toes back, lengthening. Now we're going to try something different. I want you to keep that right heel up in the air and then you're going to bend your left knee and press down into the left foot. Now we're going to go into strength for this hip. So I want you to lift your bum off the floor so slowly like little tiny micro moves that you're pressing the heel down and you're going to pelvic tilt the tailbone off the floor and lift into the air. So you activate that left hip, activates the pretty word, and you lift and you pull your toes back and see if you can be high and keep pressing on the inside of that foot. That's good. And Sarah, I know your body will do this really effectively. Julian, you're breathing. <laughs> keep the rise. That's it, Shirley. How's that feel? <laughs> That's really good. Now keep the tailbone reaching out and up and then slowly lower micro moves again. So you're really going into the hip and the thigh. 
Really good. And then one more time with that left knee bend, pull the leg in towards you. Hold on to the foot and keep the heel reaching out, dropping that right hip. And then gently release the leg and come all the way down. And just let go for a moment and feel the difference on the two sides. Just feel that. You can straighten the legs or if it feels better through your low back, you can keep the knees bent. So just feel for your best position and releasing. Lying Shavasana for a moment, either again, knees bent or straight. Good, and as you just tune into that, that increased energy in that right hip, that's basically what we're doing with the whole practice is feeling how to increase the energy in the areas that we breathe and stretch and lengthen. And that goes back into the long exhale, that capacity to calm the tissue and create balance and an inner order in your body. So now, once again, you can bend the knees. Have your feet and knees just hip width apart. So you're usually looking at like about six inches. So you've got this kind of thing. And when you come up, I'm just going to um, go ahead here for a moment. When you bring down your uh, right leg up, you're going, and I'm going to mirror you do the opposite. When you bring the leg up, try to keep um, the ball of that left foot pressing in and try not to splay the knee out. So you're going to really square. So I just wanted to give you that tracking. So first, start by drawing your left knee in. So you're just going to pull right into the body. That's great. And now just lift the upper, lift the upper body and pull the chin in as you lift the left leg up. Pull the leg in towards you. And let your shoulders rest back. And as you reach, keep the chin tucked as the heel extends out and keep that right leg on the floor, reaching out. Fantastic, good, and the upper body is down. Really good. And keep pulling that leg towards you. Of course, again, the knee might be really bent to release the hamstring. Keep the shoulders back. Good, and then from there, you can bend your right knee and bring that right foot down into the floor. So the left leg stays up in the air, surely. Yep, face, and then we're gonna press down into that right foot and press and lift and send the heel to the ceiling. Keep pressing down into that right foot. Keep the neck free so the gaze is towards the foot and you lift high and you keep reaching that heel up. The shoulders are free and breath and breath. And then slowly micro moves again, slowly lower. So you're really coming into your hip, slowly down. And then you can pull that left leg in towards you. And once again, keep the toes pulling back, heel there. The breath is constant in and out through the nose as you keep pressing that right foot down into the floor. That's good keeping the shoulders free. And two more breaths, reaching, reaching. And then you can gently release that leg down. Let both legs straighten and release into Shavasana, or if it's best to have the knees bent, just feel that. And as you, again, just attune to the increased energy in your hips, feel the back of the body release into the floor. Okay, leaving the silence, just let yourself completely go.
and then take in two deep breaths. Okay, lovely. Now you can bend both knees and just have your feet and your knees apart. And now we'll take the uh, bolster right underneath your knees. So if you do have um, a bolster at home that you purchased from me, uh, then that's wonderful. You can use that. And Julian, anybody, if you need to have um, some kind of pillow, these are just like sofa pillows. And you can take your legs like that, and you can even fold the pillow in, and then that will give you kind of a bolster effect. And then you can lie down. And you've got the backs of the knees supported, and your shoulders totally resting back. I want you to make sure that you're warm here, because we're going to spend some time in deep, deep relaxation. So let your whole body go. Notice if you can feel the back of the spine release into the floor, if you can let everything go. Now, as you breathe in and out through the nose, notice if the breaths can, breaths can be full and natural. And as you do, just notice the jaw is relaxed. There's a small space between upper and lower teeth. Just about the size of a grain of rice. And the tip of the tongue is resting behind the top front teeth. Notice that the forehead is smooth. You don't need to have any expression for anybody. You can completely soften. Notice if there's any way you could let go more, even if it's just to relax a wrist or a thumb. Now taking a few more deep breaths. Sure, you could just wriggle the shoulder blades under just to get a longer neck. So everybody at home, just, just feel how you can press the shoulder blades back and under to get that release in the neck. So we are going to spend some time releasing into the floor, letting the whole spine be heavy. Also catch what thoughts are coming. Notice what you might be thinking about. Or if you have the glory of being right here, right in this, this breath and moment. Today I'm going to read from Mary Oliver a wonderful poet. This poem is entitled, I Happen to Be Standing. I don't know where prayers go or what they do. Do cats pray while they sleep, half asleep in the sun? Does the opossum pray as it crosses the street? The sunflowers? 
the old black oak growing older every day, every year. I know I can walk through the world along the shore or under the trees with my mind filled with things of little importance in full self attendance. A condition I can't really call being alive. Is a prayer a gift or a petition or does it matter? The sunflowers blaze, maybe that's their way. Maybe the cats are sound asleep, maybe not. While I was thinking this, I happened to be standing just outside my door with my notebook open, which is the way I began every morning. Then a wren in the privy began to sing. He was positively drenched in enthusiasm. I don't know why, and yet, why not? I wouldn't persuade you from whatever you believe or whatever you don't, that's your business. But I thought of the wren singing, what could this be if it isn't a prayer? So I just listened, my pen in the air. I happen to be standing. Mary Oliver. Now continuing either with your bolster or your pillows underneath your knees. The next position is to take the feet just to the top of the bolster with the knees naturally apart. And let your shoulder blades come under again so that your neck is really nice and free. Good. Now just feel the knees sway side to side. And let your upper body go completely. See if you can feel really soft in the shoulders and the neck. And once again, just notice if there's any thoughts occurring or if you can completely let go. And as you sway, let the heaviness from side to side take you further. So you might really dip to one side, getting a great sideways stretch. That's it. That's it, Shelly. Did you have a little sleep? I did. That was so nice. <laughs> I know, I looked over and I like, this girl's going down. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's a gift. <laughs> now, if you, as you're swaying, just notice that there's a better position. And if you take the arms higher, so you're like a V, and your shoulder blades, you wriggle them under once again, so the neck is long and free. And then if you found a place as you were swishing from side to side, windshield wiper like, just notice if there was a place that it felt good to stay and then fall to that place. And let yourself just stay there, letting yourself release. The position of the head, you can face either direction, whichever feels great to let yourself go. Practice total surrender. Just notice that everything can soften. Take three more full breaths in this position. And again, completely let go.
And one more deep breath. Now, before you have any movement at all, notice the breath and see if you can breathe your legs back up, like literally let the breath pull you up. Try not to use the quads or the bum kickers and just draw a bridge up ever so slowly and then take the feet flat on the top of the pillow or the bolster. And then be at the top and completely let go again. Draw the shoulder blades under again if they happen to have risen. So the neck is free and the chest is open. And then do the opposite. Go to the other side of where you were and completely let go. Breathe in and out through the nose. And you might want to wriggle the shoulders under again. Shoulder blades come back. Stay with your breathing. And take in three more deep breaths. As always, feel, you know, if you need to naturally wriggle into some position deeper, do that so you let you really soften. And then on your next in breath, draw bridge the knees back up to the center, knees face the ceiling. Settle for a moment, take another couple of deep breaths, letting go. Very nice. Now, next position, you can take the soles of the feet together and let the knees splay apart. And it's really grand to have the um, calves right on the bolster. So I'm going to bring my bolster up or your pillows a little bit higher. And so that the outsides of the calves can rest on the top of the pillow. Yeah, good, Shirley. Now, just again, notice the position of the arms. What feels great? How can you best open here? Now, I'm, I'm going to just throw a little, another idea. And um, I know that Julian and some of you at home, you might need, um, you know, you might, if you have another sofa pillow, something that's kind of thick, you could take this underneath your tailbone. Because sure, we're going to do this today. We're going to take the cobbler into the fish pose as well. Now, I'm just going to show you that the soles of the feet come together. Now, you can see I've got my rib cage really lifted, and then I'm coming right back into fish like this. Now, that can be ever so challenging for the neck, so you might need to have a pillow underneath your head. So, this is where you'll be recruiting every single pillow <laughs> and blanket in the household. And um, here's the position. And I'm going to give you guys a lot of time if you need to get a towel or something to put under your head. And you're going to take, I've got the low back like, pressing against the edge of this, which is about four inches. So whichever position that best supports your, um, your back here. And then again, if you need to have a pillow for the head, you could have the pillow right up on, on the back and let your arms come to the side. We're going to spend some time breathing open the ribs diaphragm so that you can get nice and long and open through the chest. Yeah. The soles of the feet press together so that the knees can splay out. And that way you can really draw your tailbone down. Yeah. How's that feel, Shirley? Yeah, actually. Yeah, good. Night. Yeah, your shoulders really come a long way. 
Now, the other thing is just notice that the knees can splay out, everybody. So notice if, if they're catching. What about a Zafir pillow? Do you want another Zafir pillow? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use them. And they're, they've actually all been cleaned. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, good. Just turn your head a smidge to the right. Um, or the other way. No, you're correct. <laughs> just a tiny bit, Shirley, just a tiny bit. Like that? Uh, like, I'm so sorry. There, there, there you are. Good. Okay, good. So keep on breathing open and draw the breath down low. So it comes down low into the belly. And that way you've got a really nice open uh, long rib cage by drawing the breath down into the belly. The arms are out to the side. The palms are turned up. That's relevant because that gets the front shoulder. And you've got the weight of your head back. Now just really notice that you can draw the breath down low. So, how do you draw the breath down low? It's, it's a feeling like you're breathing in through the nostrils, just like you have straws, and you draw well into the back of the throat with that suction in, and that will draw the breath down further. You have an expanded rib cage here, which means that the diaphragm gets a lot of space for your breathing. And that way, you can really allow the belly, the rib cage to inflate and then when you exhale, you'll feel the belly release and the belly drop down. And keep noticing that you feel yourself softening down into the floor on the exhale. And of course, notice if you need your sweater or a blanket because your body temperature will drop, can drop when you're releasing this much. We're getting back in touch with our true nature. When we breathe, when we take the time to be inward. I had the delight yesterday of reading um, a fantastic uh, newsletter from, from um, my professor who specializes in pain with uh, people with dementia. So she works with pain in the elderly. And her mentor, uh, Ron Melzack, is one of Canada's uh, greatest contributors to the understanding of pain. And when he passed away, she wrote a letter about him. So imagine he had been her mentor for, I think, 20 years, but she had done her PhD, her thesis, under his guidance, under his tutelage. So she wrote a letter about what it was like to be in his presence. And the beauty of, of his presence was that he always stopped whatever he was doing and he sat with you. And he would uh, he boil the kettle and he'd sit with her and imagine she's doing her PhD thesis under him. So he's supposed to be criticizing her papers. And she said he never wrote anything on it that was like crossing something out. He would always just encourage something that, that was a good point. So all he ever did was affirmative. But the best part was, as you read through this newsletter, her writing about his passing and doing um, uh, 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 a, uh, you know, what's that called when someone dies and you write a, um, well, you write a story about them, but English. Eulogy. Eulogy, thank you. She did this eulogy and, uh, you, you actually felt like you were with him because clearly his mandate in life was to connect with people. And you could feel this as you read the newsletter, as you read this eulogy that she wrote. And at a time when we're disconnecting, where you're, you're off, you're online watching your yoga, at a time when we're disconnecting, notice how to stay feeling a connection inside that I can, Feel that was palpable as I read this eulogy about her 
her mentor, her professor. He was clearly present in all that he did. So as you're practicing your yoga now, just feel how to connect inside to the breath. And that by doing that, you're also cultivating a deep connection, a softening out of the head, into the soul, into the tissue body, and feeling a tenderizing that will allow for an expanded breath that attunes you to a harmony inside that's always there so that you can feel what it's like to feel connected inside. And to feel alive on a full level that connects you to self and other. This is our practice again and again. So as you breathe in, feel the belly of your rib cage rise, feel yourself expand. And as you exhale, just feel everything soften, release. And keep that going, just in and out. And as you're there, notice if you need to wriggle anything. Do you need to move the head back and forth, side to side rather? Do you need to draw the shoulders under a little more? Or would it feel great to bring the arms out to the side? Just feel for the best way to express into the pose. Let yourself have a wonderful expanded breath. While I search for the next beautiful poem, This one's um, in tribute to the hawk that we watched just literally hanging in the air yesterday over the ravine. It, like we were like, what? <laughs> it just looked like there was a pole. <laughs> you know, an invisible pole. <laughs> he wasn't drifting, but this poem is causing me to think of him, so I'll read it. Here we are, the poem Drifting. I was enjoying everything, rain, path, wherever it was taking me, the earth roots beginning to stir. I didn't intend to start thinking about God. It just happened. How God or the gods are invisible, quite understandable. But holiness is visible entirely. It's wonderful to walk along like that. Thought, not the usual intention to reach an answer, but merely drifting, like clouds that only seem weightless, but of course are not, are really important. I mean, terribly important, not decorations by any means. By next week, the violets will be blooming. Anyway, this was my delicious walk in the rain. What was it actually about? Think about what it is like, what it is that music is trying to say. It was something like that. Drifting. So keep on releasing, keep on releasing back. Noticing the weight of your body sinking into the bolster and into the pillows and into the floor. And then take in a deep expanding breath. So breathing in and out through the nose and feeling that nice deep breath in the chest opening. Notice if there's any way you could soften and let go anymore. And 
and soft, palms rolled up to the, finger, the, the ceiling, and your fingers naturally curled. Your wrists heavy. And then just feel happy. You're right here, letting go. Enhancing the peace inside. Elaborating a peaceful resonance coming off of you into the world, into the ether. To feel expanded inside. And to cultivate that inner harmony. changing in any way the position of the posture. In other words, if the inner thighs are starting to get pretty, pretty catching, then you could draw your knees to the ceiling and just have your feet naturally apart. And then you could continue the opening through the chest. Notice if you need to have the pillow under your head now or has your chest and your neck expanded so much that you could continue to let go more and take the pillow out from under your head. Just notice what's right. And wherever you are, just do a little utterance right now. Just do a little hello. Just do a little hello. 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 Okay, good. So just making sure the esophagus is open. So there's not any catch in your, in your utterance. And if there is, take the head up, please. Just so you make sure you've still got a nice open back of the neck. And then just to complete that, we'll say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> just let go again. Keep on staying with your in and out breath. And we're going to stay here for another three minutes. So do notice if anything needs to shift in your position. Keep on feeling the breath coming in and out so you feel the belly rise on the inhale and the belly sink on the exhale. Continue to still the mind with the breathing. Again, breathing in and out through the nose. Feeling the back of the body supported. And feeling the chest open. And then notice the duration of the in-breath. How long is the in-breath? And then notice how long the exhale is. That's it. Just simply notice in and out how long they are so you can be in them as they go.
taking one more minute to keep releasing. how much the body can soften. Few more breaths to complete the pose. Lovely, one more full breath. And then you can bring your awareness back to your body. Begin to release from the pose by, if the feet are not bent up to the ceiling, knees rather, then do bend the knees right up to the ceiling. Now you can do a small pelvic tilt. So you're going to lift the tailbone off the floor. Just feel the rise. And you're going to do this a number of times. So you're going to lift the tailbone up, slowly lower down. So you keep sending the tailbone out and up, feeling the activation of the low back nerves and vertebrae and back muscles. Just keep feeling the massage action through that area as you go into little tiny moves to come up and down. And two more. And as you're finishing the final one, gently release the bum back down. Now take the hands behind the head, interlace the fingers. Take an inhale and lift the head, tuck the chin. So now you're pressing your low back down into the floor. You're getting a good stretch in the upper back with the bum heavy. And you super tuck the chin while you breathe. Stay with the action, stay with the breath. Really tuck the chin. One more full breath in that tuck. And then you're going to take the left hand down, take the legs right over the pillows or the bolster. And then you're going to take the right hand down, push through the fingers, elbows back, and rise right up from there and come right out over the legs. So you're going to let your head dangle and stay with your breath. Yeah, very nice. Do any kind of little wriggles that feel so good to get deeper into the pose. Keep on breathing in and out through the nose. Good, the head is heavy. And then you can slowly uncurl and just come back up. Okay, really nice. Now, I want you to do the same pose. And notice that this time as you come forward, is it possible to come 
I'm just wondering here if you can cut the tops of the feet. So you're going to use your fingertips and then pull yourself forward from there. Yeah. Now, as you know from my instructions before in other classes, you always use the backs of the arms to pull you forward. So you press the backs of the arms, even the hands are barely doing work, to press you into the shins and then you come forward. That's really good. And then just further instruction around that, if we're showing you about the, the uh, bolster, the backs of the arms are pressing into the shins to pull you forward. Okay. That's really good. Really good. Sure, we just pull the right toes back. Right. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Good. Can you stay in the breathing? Good. Do you feel the low back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're really working to get leverage forward and out so you can hook off the low back. Now, in your position, just look up because it's really good. That's really good. Good for the back. Now, I just want to show you. So this is kind of your entertainment value. Um, this is like doing, uh, this is like doing your um, turtle pose which I'll, I'll show you, let's see, I'll show you this way. In turtle pose, nope, I have to show you this way. You jump your legs around your arms, you come down, and then you bring your legs out, and you release. So what we're doing is a humane version <laughs> of turtle pose. <laughs> so this time, you could take the bolster out, and we'll take the hands on the inside. So you're gonna bring the arms out and forward. Your thumbs turn in, and then you'll turn the thumbs this way, and you dive under. You grab what you can get, and then you reach the heels out, and you fold forward. And that way, your backs of your legs press into your arms, and you can be here, and you're pulling forward, so you get that reach. That's it. And good, as the head falls, you can get more of a reach in through your low back. And actively keep reaching the heels out. And if you're up here, that's great. Get that good pull forward. Really good. Stay with the breathing. Extending out from your low back. Staying with the breathing. And two more breaths. Head falls. Let the weight of the head pull you down. One more full breath. And then you can gently pull the left or right arm out first. Bend that elbow in. Pull the other elbow in. Push through the palms to lengthen up from your back and just walk the hands in. Now stay in your straddle so you can bring the legs uh, reaching out. And of course, feel free to face the side if you need the ankles on your, on your um, mat to give you a little bit of a better position. And then pull back from the toes. And here you can take the hands just on the inside and you're gonna roll the inner thighs out. So you're turning the toes back and the thighs up towards the ceiling. That's great. Good. And you're getting into five layers here. There's five stacked layers of different lengths. And if you can knead the different layers out, and we're going to stimulate the inner thigh muscles as well as the muscles that are on the insides and the knees. So again, that roll out. The toes draw back as much as you can to get that inner thigh activated. That's really good. And then you can come back up. Good. Now we're going to take the hands and we're just going to make little cups like this. And then you're going to take the legs in just about probably halfway. And now we're going to do the slapping of the thigh. So we'll do this. <laughs> now, that was great. <laughs> okay, so I want to 
started to, to see the, the difference between lengthening and using the only energy in. Okay, so let's come the other side, cups. Notice if you can come out and reach out through the heel. So you're right at the front of the bones as much as you can, and then extend forward from your chest. Also, feel free to use your pillow in front. You can use, if you do have a bolster, you can come long ways uh, across, or you can come this way, and then reach out. And it's a super great way to get the support. And you can let your head dangle. And as you, as you get forward, completely let go, keeping the breath. Good, so you keep on breathing in and out through the nose. Do keep the heels pulling back, so, or the toes rather, so you keep the heels reaching out. Good. Staying with the breath. And now just breathing in and come on back up. You can take the bolster uh, just to the side, have the legs straight in front. And now just coming to the front of the bum bones, pulling the toes back. Now you can take your left ankle in and bend that knee and then come crossed over for the spinal twist. You can draw that right, uh, sorry, that left knee up high and then get the elbow down nice and low. We'll windmill and turn to your left and press that left hand in behind you. Lovely. So again, you're really at the front of the bum bones as you lift and rise and keep drawing right up from your spine. Good. Also, do notice that you're not tipped over to one side. Attempt to be right up from the middle of your tailbone and your breath is constant. And do gaze back. Remember, the more you gaze back, the more you can turn the middle spine. And you're propped up. The hand behind is really snug and close behind the back. So you're not leaning back and you can get that height. Now come on back to the front and then take that leg up. So you're going to pull the leg in, hug around so you've got that really nice lift. And then you can flex the foot, get the elbow snug if you can, and then pull the leg in towards your curve. So you feel that nice lift right in through the spine. Excellent. Keeping the rise and feel the shoulders back, the chin is back. And then you can do a little rock side to side. That's it. And as usual, try to stay with the front of the back, try not to sit back. Very good. Now you can take that foot in and press the foot to the inside of the thigh and then extend out, pull the toes back over the leg and reach forward right from the chest. And again, keep the toes pulling back as you reach forward. Actively press that foot into your inner thigh to get that knee to rotate out. Really good. And then you can breathe in, jaw all the way back up. And now you can extend that left leg out, draw the right foot in, and then draw that ankle right across, come right to the front of the bum bones, pull that knee in, get this arm down low, windmill the arm behind, turn to your right, and try to really stay lifted from the bottom of the spine. That's it. See if you can really prop up, pull that right knee in snug, keeping the breath constant. Good. 
and then you can slowly rotate back to your front. Now take that heel just on to the inside and get your, no, actually you're gonna do this one. So you're gonna take your foot up and then just hug that knee, that knee goes out, hug your foot in and see if you can get nice and tall, that's it. Trying to lift from the base of the spine, fantastic. And then do a little rock side to side. That's it. Keeping the rise from the rib cage. Good. And then you can take that foot in as close as you can or further out if it's better for the knee. So just notice. So either the heel comes in close or further out to get that stretch. And then you extend forward. So you're gonna reach right out, pull back from the toes as you extend forward. That's it, getting that reach. Good, feel the baby toe side pull back. That's it, a little more surely if you could. And lengthening, that's it. Keep that reach so you come right up and forward. Now you can breathe in, draw all the way back up. Good. And then from there, you can draw that uh, leg in. Now, um, we're going to come to all fours position. No, we're not. We're going to do, um, I just want to get a bit more of an emphasis of opening for the throat today for the immune system. So I'd like to do, I'm going to show you two poses. Um, one is to have the hands back just about nine inches, and so a little less than a foot. And you're going to turn the fingers in. The shoulders will actually come forward, not back. So you press through the shoulders and you press through the backs of the hands. It'll also be a really strong stretch for the wrist too. So really listen to that. And you're going to point the toes and lift from the rib cage and gaze up. And you really feel the chin high, and you feel the um, palms press. But the funniest thing is the shoulders are coming forward. So you're going to really stretch in the front of the shoulder. And you know what? I'd like you to just make sure your hands are even. The best way to do that is go on the tips of your fingers. Goodness. And just see if they, it's the only way you can do this really is if I'm looking. But just make sure one hand isn't a little bit further forward than the other. And then press down. <laughs> you can't really tell 100%. Maybe. <laughs> And then you'll press through the palms, and here we go again. Shoulders come forward, breathe in, gaze up. Let the head come all the way back if you can. So this is safe. You're really reaching the chin out. Shoulders get forward, and the breath is open. If you feel the breath, the breath tightens, so if it goes like this, if your throat gets tight, then lift the chin slightly. And then breathe in on your next in-breath, and draw right back up. And then you'll take the hands behind the head, interlace, exhale, tuck the chin. Breathe in and out through the nose in the tuck. Keeping the steady breath. And then you can gently release and just let the head down. And come on into a cross-legged position or any kind of position that's comfortable to be tall in. And then um, we're going to do just some really nice side and neck stretches. So again, if you need to sit on your bolster or on your Zafu pillow, then you can get a nice tall back that way. Now, we're going to take the left hand out, turn the thumb down, take that hand behind with the thumb up, and it's perfectly fine if you're, you know, behind. But get that elbow to pull across a lot. And that will help, like this. And that will help to really draw that left shoulder blade down. So you're pulled over. Then I like to clasp and then take an in breath and drop the ear, just like a heavy earring, over to your right as you lengthen out of that left shoulder. And you're breathing in and out through the nose. Releasing and letting the weight of the head down. You can even tip a bit, just a bit to the right, off your ribs. And one more breath. And then breathe in, come on all the way back up. Wonderful. 
take that pinto, right thumb down, come back, draw that elbow across, just interlace, shoulders down, in breath, and exhale over to the side. Lovely. So we've got our shoulder down and back. Staying with nice deep breaths. more deep breaths. Again, you might tip off the ribs to tip over to the side to keep that nice opening. And then you can breathe in and draw right back to your middle. Okay, lovely. And then just releasing the hands. So I'm wishing that this area got opened up when you did that. Anything that you're bringing the hands behind so you can come down into line relaxation now, coming into Shavasana, totally letting go into the floor. Let your whole body rest back. Feel the shoulders release. And let the palms roll up to the ceiling. Let your feet just roll out in relaxation. Good, and feel the backs of the knees letting go. Draw your awareness into your breathing. Feel the belly rise on the inhale and sink on the exhale. Let this be a lying meditation, drawing you into a stillness. And as I leave you in silence, just feel the entire front body let go. And the back of the body release into the floor. As you lie, as you lie, continue to feel the body rest back. Keep on feeling how as you breathe in, the belly rises. And as you exhale, the belly drops, releasing you further into the floor. Catch if any thought is rising, 
be interested, interested in what the thought is, what it's about. So as you're interested in what the thought might be about, just notice that that gives you awareness about what you're thinking about these days or in this day, in this day. and simply that, just the awareness, no need for it to be any way. And then you have that information of what your mind wants to go to right now. It's informing you of what you are thinking about. And then notice if that thought has any meaning. Is it meaningful? Is it contributing to your life? Is it contributing to your life? Or is it a worry thought? And see if you could come into such a soft presence that any or the next thought would be one that is connecting you to yourself, a soft thought, a meaningful thought, like um, a warmth inside, an expanded soul feeling. See if that can be the way you feel right now. Breaths, breaths, elaborating, the feeling of letting go. And then on your next in-breath, you can take in a fuller breath. and completely exhale. And again, a nice full breath, completely exhale, noticing that you can keep softening into the floor. And then you can bend your knees. Just have the feet flat on the floor. Arms come out to the side like a T and turn the palms up to the ceiling. Once again, completely let go. And feel the weight of the tailbone come down. And just feel like that tailbone is like a hot air balloon that's just landed, softened onto the ground. And see if you can once again, let all your tissue be soft and land. And then gently draw the knees in a little closer, feet in a little closer, and really gently, almost like it's your breathing that's going to lift your heels off the floor. Take a deep breath in and draw the knees into your body and just hug wide, wide, wide. So you're going to really pull the knees apart. So you've got them as wide apart as you could. Good. So 
basically it's kind of like a gynecologist <laughs> position for those of you that are familiar. <laughs> and just get that gentle rock side to side. Come right into each side of the tailbone. Now hold on to behind the knees and bring the feet back towards you and then hold on lower on the legs, maybe even to the feet and bend the knees to the outside. And let the elbows bend outside and then do a gentle rock side to side. Great, and then you can let your heels fall. And now gently roll to your right side and lie in fetal position for a moment. Just take that right hand under for a pillow and completely let go again. Take in a nice deep breath. You can slowly push up and draw right up to seated position, taking a moment to settle and to feel your body on the floor and to feel all the tender little shifts that have gone on inside. And then you can bring your Awareness back to this room. And we'll bring our hands together and bow Namaste. 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 Lovely. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Thanks, Shirley. Bye, Celeste. <laughs> Thank you, Celeste. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks.